For those of you who don't know, the American Enterprise Institute, which I run now, is, is a 200-person think tank in the heart of Washington, D.C. that uh, publishes more in the major papers than any other think tank in the world, that has, does twice as much congressional testimony as any other think tank in the world. It has outsized influence as effectively the brain of the free enterprise movement, or so it thinks it about itself. It's a famous place. It's a place I've always loved. Since I started reading the work of Charles Murray, who was a scholar at the American Enterprise Institute, rather, you know, Michael Novak, who is an important Catholic writer, uh, Peter Wallison, who predicted the Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac uh, uh, meltdowns uh, nine years before they happened. I mean, it's just the list goes on and on. 60 senior, full-time, fairly famous scholars there. It's a, it's a kind of a storied place. Uh, as an academic, you know, had, having an opportunity to go to a place and to trade my own research agenda effectively for the research agendas of 60 scholars who I felt were more brilliant and had better ideas than me actually seemed like a pretty good trade. The midterm elections that are coming up, well, we sort of touched on that a second ago, but uh, the, the standard wisdom is that Republicans will pick up something like 10 seats in the House of Representatives. Uh, and, some, and make some progress in the Senate. Uh, it's almost certainly the case that that will happen because it usually does in midterm elections. It's almost certainly the case also that the Republicans will misinterpret that as a vote of confidence in Republicans as opposed to a vote of lack of confidence for the Democrats and the ruling party. That they will take this as some sort of, uh, some sort of affirmative gesture toward the, the, the vision that they don't have. Uh, and it will be harmful for actually trying to get a realistic alternative that cares about the free enterprise system. That will not help the movement of free enterprise gain intellectual credibility and it won't help us to build a beachhead in principle over power. So actually I don't particularly look forward to that. I don't look for, I mean as much as it'll be sort of satisfying in a way to see the ruling power lose power, um, I don't think it's actually going to be helpful. So the The, the story of the November election, this big Democratic sweep, is not a repudiation of conservatism. It's a repudiation of Republican mismanagement. It's a repudiation of Republicans substituting power for principle for year after year after year. Americans don't like that. I mean, you want evidence that the Republicans didn't govern according to principle? They did nothing about the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the National Endowment for the Arts, the National Endowment for the Humanities, things that are openly subversive agencies to principles that conservatives hold dear. Now whether or not you agree with those principles is something else entirely. Whether or not I agree with all those principles is something else entirely. The, in point of fact, the idea of government television is antithetical to the true conserv conservative vision in this country. And the Republicans were incapable of even addressing the idea of the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. That's because it's not that much money and we don't have the votes, and it's kind of inconvenient, and who really cares, and let's accumulate more power anyway, as opposed to doing the right thing. Sooner or later, not doing the right thing catches up with you, it turns out. You already knew that, but Republicans, not so much. In the healthcare debate, and in many other debates, AEI's relationship with the current White House is troubled. Um, let's just put it that way. Um, the, the, the cur in the current health care, it, it, it is senseless to argue that the American health care system doesn't need reform. It does. And it needs reform for one really big reason and one not so big reason. The really big reason is that a lot of people don't have health care coverage. And in an already rich country, that's not good. 
I think pretty much everybody can, I mean, most people can agree on that. We can argue about the numbers, how many are illegal immigrants, how many are legal. It, millions and millions of people in this country, which is the richest country in the history of the world, don't have basic health care. That's, that, for a lot of people like me, that's bad stewardship. So we want to fix that. That's, we need reform. Number two is that health care is really expensive and we have double digit inflation. That's less of a problem because in a rich country we get to decide whether or not we want to bid up the price of certain goods and services. Cars are a lot more expensive than they used to be too because they're much better products than they have been. We have wonderful health care in this country and of course it costs more. Still, the fact that it's so expensive is, is, is a problem for a lot. So we need reform. Let's just decide that we need reform, which at AEI I think that we've established uh, to our own satisfaction. The question is, what do you do? Um, the, the current, the party in power, the, the, the current administration and the current Congress say that we need to throw out the whole system and little by little replace it with uh, much, much more socialized medicine. What they want is a single payer plan. And a single payer plan is in which everybody dips out of this, basically the same pot. They have, everybody has their health care covered by government, kind of like Canada or UK and a lot of other countries. They can't do that because Americans don't want it. And Americans don't want it not because it sounds really inefficient, although it does, but rather because Americans have their values tied up in the free enterprise system. And it does violence to how people see the world in the United States to do things like that, to nationalize one-sixth or one-seventh of the American economy. We have to realize, people who agree with me, people who agree with people like me, need to understand, well, not everybody does, and a lot of reasonable people don't, I should emphasize, that we need to understand that, that, we, we, that reform is important and that there are pro-market, pro-free enterprise ways to do it that would solve these problems. We don't need a pretext to pull up the free enterprise system by its roots. The Senate this week voted no on same-sex marriage. Mm. There's a debate going on, certainly in, in evangelical circles. Uh, well, is it inevitable? that this is going to spread through the country or at least through the largest states or can this still be stopped? Um, generally speaking, when voters are exposed to the decision about same-sex marriage, they say no. When judges are exposed to it, they say yes. Right. This is a struggle between people and judges, plain and simple. Um, now, y you have to recognize it as such, even if you're, you can come down on, I mean, this is one area where reasonable people really do disagree. It's a very tough issue. Um, and I'll give you one little wrinkle in it in a minute that you probably haven't thought of. Even if you are a, a dyed-in-the-wool Christian conservative and you think you really know about this, let me, let me see if I can you know, shake up your world a little bit on it in a second. But in the meantime, just as a matter of how we make decisions as a society, we're deciding whether or not, as judges are telling multiple constituencies in the United States, that they are not capable of making a decision because it might compromise a group that's protected, that it might actually affect civil rights. And in the same way that we would not allow a particular constituency to vote to strip away the rights of women to vote, we can't take away a particular equal right to marriage under these circumstances. Really dubious, I understand, but that's the basic argument. Every time that the humans are exposed at the ballot box, as opposed to the judges, we're not human, apparently. The, the humans vote no. Okay, that's really telling, right? Now, that said, here's the argument that a lot of conservatives are going to start making, a lot of particularly libertarian conservatives are going to start making. Why is the government in the marriage business in the first place? I think we ought to be against straight marriage. Actually, the joke is that at AEI, let gays marry. They'll hate it. <laughs> no, the... Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> that was Irving Crystal's line. <laughs> the, um, but, you know, a lot of conservatives are starting to, to, to question the, the legal and moral basis for the government being in the marriage game to begin with. Frankly, I, marry, I value my marriage as a Roman Catholic more than I value my marriage as a citizen of the state of Maryland, right, when you think about it. And, I mean, to me, marriage is a sacrament. It's not a bureaucratic function, and, and to a certain extent, one way to short-circuit this entire debate as a libertarian is to say, now I got an idea, let's get the government out of the whole marriage game on both sides, and let's leave it to houses of worship, and then we'll really see what the other side is made of. 
uh, in this debate because they'll say, you know what, I want to take away the Roman Catholic Church's 501c3 tax-exempt status because they won't marry gays, and then we'll have a fight. Mm -hmm.